Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, back on this musical paradise and we're going to go over how to do the mods to the circuit board. And while you can replace these parts without like disconnecting all the wires and pulling the board out, we're going to pull the board out. It's a little easier to show on a video. And it's really not that difficult to just disconnect those wires and take the board out and get the chassis out of your way. So especially for folks that are new to this, might be easier to do it that way. I also decided to split this up into two videos. We're going to do the basic removing the board, doing the cathode resistor and bypass cap for the driver tube, and then we're going to come back and do the rest of the mods in the second video and quick kind of reassembly video. And so let's jump in this. Okay, so let's dive into doing the mods on this little musical paradise unit. I think the easiest way to do this is to just take the board out. You can probably do it. I mean, I did this side without taking the board out, but if you're going to do both sides, it's probably easier to do this just with the board out of the amp. So, first thing you need to do is this blue wire right here needs to be unsoldered from the board. Just like that. Then the next thing you want to do, we're going to be done with the soldering iron for a minute here. Turn it off. You want to take out the four screws on the front of this panel where it attaches the panel to the chassis. Now you may notice there's a blank spot here. The output transformer, I pulled it out in anticipation of using the Ed cores, which were sadly inferior to what the amp comes with, which was a disappointment. I've never tried their open frame XSE transformers, but they are horrible performers for hi-fi use. And I went over that in the last video. But I figured why put the transformer back in until I'm finished with the board. It might make it a little easier to see some of this. So when you're working on yours, there'll be a like this transformer here will be sitting on the other side. So, pull this front cover off and then it just kind of comes up out of the way. There's one electrical connector up here in the front, right there, and then it flips over out of the way. And there's four screws. At least I remember there being four. One of the original screws disappeared on me. But this little replacement we used was just fine. And I think that's all that holds it in place. And it's a little, as you can see, it's a little snug. But probably no point in removing the board completely to do this mod. If you do want to remove it, there's some wires here. And I'm going to go ahead just for this video and remove it. Now these are AC wires, so it really doesn't matter where they go. But I'm going to go ahead and just get a little paint marker and mark the board and the wire on each one just so we put it back exactly like it was again those are AC wire so it really shouldn't make any difference it'll just be a little easier to show you guys what I'm doing with the board removed from the chassis and then Obviously, I've got a picture, 
showing that it's pink, brown, and blue, which is the pink is the B+, plus, the brown is the ultralinear, and the blue is the plate. Those definitely have to go in the right order. Once you loosen these screws enough, these wires should all just come out. Again, you can probably do this without having to disconnect all these wires. It's not that difficult to disconnect all of them. And then you can just take the board out of the chassis and it will make it a little easier to work on. It'll definitely make it easier to video it. And there's the board, it comes right out. So we can put the chassis over to the side. And here's our board. Now, one of the things, let me zoom in a little here. As you can see, this is a Mark III version 2.0. I have no idea what the earlier versions were all about, what they're like, how much difference there is, all that stuff, got no idea. So, this is specifically for this version that I have. The earlier ones are probably very similar. The other thing that you want to have is some of this desoldering wick stuff. You can also use a little sucker tool. Some people like using that. I'm just a fan of this wicking stuff. The other thing that helps that wicking stuff work really well is to have a little bit of flux. And there we go. There's just some rosin soldering flux. And if you dip this in the flux, it makes this wicking stuff work way better. So, first thing we're gonna do is, and like I said, I've already modified this side of the board. We're gonna attack this side. First thing we're going to do is this cap gets removed and then this resistor here gets changed. And the other thing you probably want to do before you get started is to print up the schematic that I'm going to post on my website so you've got a copy of that handy. And since I don't have that handy while my soldering iron is warming up, I'm going to go print a copy of that so I have it in front of me. Okay, so we have our schematic here in front of us and we're going to start down here on the 6SJ7 tube side of everything because that's where most of the mods are being done. So the first thing you want to do is this capacitor here is getting thrown in the trash. We're going to change this resistor here to a 670 ohm. We're actually going to use a 680 ohm because that's the closest in a normal value resistor. And then this capacitor here is getting changed from a 100 UF to a 220 UF. So let's unsolder those pieces and get to work. As you can see, this is a pretty giant sized circuit board. This isn't one of those little delicate surface mount kind of deals. And so this is the film cap that we're not going to be using. This guy right here. And then the next thing we want to do is unsolder this resistor right here. It might help to get like a little pair of needle nose pliers, kind of pull on it while you're hanging the solder up and it comes right out. Now there's two ways you can go about putting the new resistor in. You can either just kind of heat this up and try to stick the wire through or what I prefer to do is use some of this braid and desolder the hole so we can put the resistor through and solder it like you normally would 
And you might have to come over to the other side and do a little more desoldering. Second hole here. And on finer circuit boards I found, you might have to get a toothpick or something to open the hole up, but this is a fairly coarse designed circuit board. And so it's fairly easy to suck the solder out of those holes. And one thing you want to do is you want to stand this resistor up proud of the board. Kind of like that. Because there's going to be a little more heat going through this resistor than the original one. So as we're biasing it a little hotter, I come in here and solder this guy in. I normally have my little fan running so that I don't get a face full of flux smoke, but it's kind of hard to do that and do a video too, so I just have to hold my breath when the flux smoke's coming up. Next is this little capacitor here is going to get pulled out, and you just so I'll bit that over like that. You just heat up one leg while you're pushing on it, and then you come in and do the other leg. That. And then you might have to do one more little. There we go. And then the same deal. And with this desoldering braid, you just cut off the part that gets saturated. Maybe give it a little another dip in the flux. And especially on these capacitors, it's probably a good idea to clean the hole out so you don't have to put too much heat into the capacitor while you're trying to solder it in. As you can see, it cleans up pretty easily. So then next we're going to get our little 220 UF and we're using a 25 volt one. There's very little voltage on this capacitor. There's only 4 volts. So this is kind of overkill, but this is what I have in stock. You'll see there's a plus and a minus. You need to make very sure that you put this thing in right because these are polarized. And if you put them in backwards, they will blow up. So you put that little guy in like that. And then bend the leads over. And then come in on this side. And solder this in. Like that. Trim off the excess. And this surface is nowhere close to the chassis, so it's not like you have to cut these things super flush. You just trim off the excess. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this big cap out of the way. And we're going to be replacing it with one that's physically a lot smaller but there was really no reason to have a cap this high a voltage in this location and it is a little glued down so you might have to kind of rock it back and forth a little bit and you can see the glue that was on it as you heat up the pins it kind of helps loosen that glue up and it'll come right off and heating that up, the glue is nice and soft, so go ahead and just peel that off while, you're, while the board's warm. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my little solder sucker, or my braiding here, and we're going to clean out these holes. But I think I'm going to wait to put that capacitor in until I do 
the other modifications. I'm going to put that cap in last. And we only have 25 volts or 23 volts across this capacitor. So a 50 volt one is plenty big. For some reason, they used a 250 volt capacitor, which doesn't make any sense. But hey, maybe that's just what they had or they had a bunch of them or those were cheap. Whoever was building this thing and that's what they designed it around. Who knows? Might have been surplus or yeah, I don't, I don't know what the thought was behind that. So we're going to be replacing all four of these resistors with different values. And one of them is going to be connected differently than it was originally. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and remove all these. So I'll do that and we'll come right back. Well, like I said at the start, we're going to split this into two videos. I hope this is helpful showing you how to do these mods to this little amp step by step. You will need soldering iron. Really like this little Heiko soldering station. It's a little over $100 or $125, something like that, if you're going to be doing a lot of work. It's a great little unit to buy. Obviously, there's some cheaper options. You're also going to need some sort of a digital voltmeter. And I'm using this Fluke 17B. I'm not even sure if it's a current model. I'll put a couple of options below in the links for my Amazon affiliate account just in case you need that kind of stuff and I'll put the desoldering wick stuff and the solder that I like with the RA flux really makes a big difference on soldering using quality solder. There's some of this no lead solder and some of these other flexes that just I've struggled with and I've been soldering for years. So anyway, I'll put that in the description. Thanks to all you Patreon folks, also all you subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Please like the video and we'll see you for the next round of Musical Paradise Mods. Have a nice day.